Assalamu alaikum. Unless you're living under the proverbial rock, you know that markets have been falling off of a cliff as of late. And by the way, if you are able to afford to live under an actual rock, you're probably doing better than most. Portfolios are getting absolutely decimated as markets reprice stocks based on the Federal Reserve revising rate projections upward for 2022 to 4.4% from 3.4% in June. That number rises to 4.6% from 3.8% in 2023. The rate was also raised higher for 2024 to 3.9% from 3.4% in June and is expected to remain elevated at 2.9% in 2025. I'm sure many investors are asking themselves what to do. Do they continue to buy the dip and the dip of the dip and the dippity dip 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 or do they just call it quits and sit on the sidelines for a while until the dust settles. What I want to provide you today is two reasons for optimism. The first is that I think the Fed is bluffing on one key claim of theirs. And the second relates to some of the opportunities that are abound in the market today. Before I start, I would like to make an announcement, which is that PIF membership will be undergoing a pretty substantial change and upgrade to user experience during the first week of October. And on this momentous occasion, we are running a very special offer. If you sign up for annual membership anytime between now and October 1st, around five days, if you're watching this video on the day it came out, you're not only going to get two free months of membership, but I'm also going to add the recently completed course that I made, How to Screen Stocks for Sharia Compliance. I'm going to add that to every annual membership for free. So if you get the annual membership to PIF, you not only lock in your rates for the next 12 months and avoid inflation, even though the features that we're offering in PIF are increasing all the time, you also get two free months of membership as well as the course on screening stocks for Sharia compliance for free. This offer is only valid until October 1st, so make sure to sign up today. So I think it's important in this discussion to realize that there is no such thing as unprecedented times. If history teaches us anything, it is that there is nothing really new. Rather, there are patterns that repeat and general trend lines. And if we identify these patterns and trend lines, we're better able to deal with reality. And we're much better off doing things that way than we are processing every new event as a one-off that's never been seen before and therefore cause for panic. Now let's look at the historical instances when the S&P fell 23% or more in the first nine months of a year, as it has in this year. In the last 70 years, this has happened 10 times. In eight out of the 10 instances, the market was down for the year in which the 23% drop happened. So there's a high likelihood that this will be the case this year as well. That is we're going to close lower than where we started. What's interesting is that in seven out of 10 instances, the very next year was up an average of 18%. So if history repeats itself, we could be looking at a strong rebound in 2023. Of course, past performance is no guarantee of future results, but it's worth noting that in every instance where the market dropped 23% or more, it eventually recovered and went on to new highs. So if this is the historical record, which as far as I can tell, is the best available predictor for what the future holds, then it only makes sense for us to view this recent drop not as a challenge, but as an opportunity. I also think the Fed is pretty much out of ammo when it comes to raising rates beyond the levels it has projected for the upcoming couple of years. The reason I think this is because raising rates is increasing how difficult it is for the US government to pay its bills. The fact of the matter is the US runs on debt. It currently has $30 trillion of debt 
and raising rates makes both our future borrowing and some of our existing debt much more expensive to finance. So I'm calling BS when the Fed says that they're going to keep raising rates until inflation is under control. The truth of the matter is they will raise rates as much as they can without bankrupting the US government in hopes inflation comes under control. And if it doesn't, they're going to change their mandate from 2% inflation every year to some other number that is higher. And consumers are just going to have to deal with a new normal where inflation is higher than it has been historically. That said, I do think inflation will fall from where it is right now. Maybe it won't go back to 2%. But we're already seeing commodity prices falling. And there are some secular elements to innovation that are by nature deflationary. And this innovation is accelerating all the time. So what does this mean for stocks? Well, it means plainly that everything's on sale now. Across the board, there are opportunities, not just in gross stocks, but in dividend stocks as well. Not just in large caps, but in small caps as well. And I said this much in a note that I sent to PIF members this week. Of the stocks and cryptos in PIF's watch list, nearly 80% are currently in buy territories with their prices. The average upside amongst gross stocks in our watch list, that is the difference between the current price and sell price that we assign to them is close to 65%. CleanSpark, ticker symbol CLSK, is a Bitcoin mining company, has a book value of close to $9. That is, if you were going to liquidate the company, you would expect to receive $9 per share of the company. Currently, it's trading close to $3 per share. It's expected to have revenue of more than $200 million next year, but it's currently trading at a market cap of $150 million today. Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA is a company that I've owned for many years and have been increasing my position in. I believe it to be one of the most innovative companies in the world and its products are just getting better and better. It currently has a forward PE of 46. The last time it had a forward PE as low as 46 was in 2019 right before it went on a 10x run. Novartis, ticker symbol NVS, is a company that I have in the PIF dividend portfolio. It's a large multinational pharmaceutical company with products in many therapeutic areas. It has close to 150 projects in various stages of clinical development, which implies big opportunity for growth. And it is trading at a forward PE of 12, which is less than the average forward PE in the S&P. And it has an annual dividend north of 4%. Needless to say, opportunities abound in the market today. Investors today are basically like shoppers who enter a store and find every everything 30 to 50 percent off as a shopper this is great obviously if you are a seller this is not too great and you should probably not be in the markets at all if you don't have a long-term investment horizon but looking at my youtube stats and demographics most of you should have a long-term investment horizon most of you are within the age brackets that should have long-term investment horizons and for net buyers this is absolutely an opportunity i for one am going Going to continue to buy opportunistically and invest in companies that I believe are trading at a significant discount to intrinsic value. If you want to be in the know with regards to where we're seeing the most opportunities and which names we like the most, make sure to take advantage of the offer we have running until the 1st of October, where in every annual membership, 2PIF comes with two free months of membership and the course on screening stocks for Sharia compliance absolutely free. Get it before the major improvement in user interface and lock in your price before many more features are added. Like and subscribe if you like this video and until next time make sure to take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.